is a time of rejuvenation, reflection, and preparation for the day ahead. Yes. And this beautiful and blessed morning, the land of Basta is adorned with a galaxy of spiritual heads and a vibrant and courageous missionaries. Visiting Jagdalpur and even visiting the village by nation 
I do ask a wonderful experience for all of us that we took time to visit even remote village missions in Jagadal So I am very happy to welcome Bishop with my own name, Joseph Kodam Marvin, from Shamshawa. Bishop, when he came to Shamshawa, when you are born missionaries, he will be here me. I am going to Shamshawa, but I am here itself. I wish you, Joseph Kodam Marvin, everybody, welcome to our country. Also, I welcome Father Joel Chariya Maranj, our resource person today to share the mission concerns and such people. I cordially welcome each and every one of you in our department. Reverend Bishop Jones, who then began an auxiliary bishop of Malinaba. Reverend Bishop Jones, Chichu Barabin, Bishop of Transport. Reverend Bishop Thomas, to the Major Bishop of Unity of Dorapur. Reverend Bishop Joseph, to the Barabin, to Bishop of Shamshaba. Reverend Father George, the Museum, Vida General of Mizra. Reverend Father Benny, Michael B.G. Chanda. Reverend Father Paul Anjani, B.G. Sagan. Reverend Father George Arikel, Chancellor of Kalia Nation. Reverend Father Sivichin, Joseph Chancellor of Satna. And Reverend Father Ann Matthew from Uji. That's very specifically said what he was sent, what was his mission. A missionary is one who is sent by God. He was sent by the Father. And this is his mission to be continued or performed. And we as the followers of Christ has to do the same, continue the same mission of Christ. Quite often we think that the missionary mandate which we have called is that go, go to the ends of the world and proclaim and baptize them in the name of the Father, Son and the Holy Spirit. That is what we always think, that's our mission. It is true, it is for that purpose we are sent. But before the proclamation, Jesus when he said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, and he has anointed me. So the mission starts when a person 
he is having the spirit of the Lord upon him or her. That's the same reason that Jesus, when he has entrusted this vision to them and when he has taken back to his father, he taught them, don't go. So quite often we think that our mission is to go and okay. But before that, Jesus said, don't go. Don't go out of Jerusalem until you are filled with the Spirit. So, filling with the Spirit or becoming a spiritual person is a prerequisite for missionary activities. And we are very much clear about that. We are, should be spiritual persons, then we start our mission. This mission has, first and said, it is to proclaim. Proclamation is part and parcel of the mission. Proclaim the good news. The person and the message of Christ to the others. And also to give sight to the blind or the other services. So specifically our mission has got three aspects. One is prayer. Prayer, we pray to God for ourselves as well as to get the spirit as well as praying for the others to whom we are sent. So prayer is part and parcel of the first component of our mission. Secondly, it is proclamation. This proclamation can be through word, through our activities, and through our own life. Our own life witnessing is a proclamation. So proclamation is another aspect. And third is our service, the evangelical or the what is in the apostle, the different apostles in which we are engaged. Or that also is a means for proclamation. The different apostles like uh, education, social work, healthcare, and all those things. So, so some total, these three components should be taken into consideration when we think about a mission. The purpose for which I am asked to give an orientation, why we are having such a consultation or a conference here, the background already, Bishop Kolam has mentioned. Vision about the mission. As we know, this gathering is having is a great privilege for the, the party of Jagdalpur to host such a historical event which will have indelible impact in the diocese, in the church. Its significance is highlighted by the gracious presence of uh, bishops, our fathers, sisters from different parties. On this gracious occasion, we are so privileged to have a great personality here for the input session, session of this day. His Excellency, Bishop Anthony Prince Manengad, the Bishop of Adilabad. He is a pastor, does not need any kind of introduction because he is very familiar for us with his message of fire. His thoughts and ideas are very vibrant and sharp. It's true that some empowering thoughts to ignite the minds illuminates the path with the missionary zeal and enthusiasm. Endless days of hard work and simple and humble life that will bring meaning to one's life. This is what our dear Bishop was ordained as a priest in the year 2007 and he obtained his doctorate from Rome in Biblical Theology and his Episcopal ordination was in the year 2015. Your Excellency, this is the first mission, mission consultation to hear the voice of the mission. This voice will be echoed in the Catholic Church in the dioceses and here too. It is very sure that 
your innovation, your vision, and your ideas will empower us, will motivate us. First of all, I would like to thank you sincerely for your presence here for this great event. I also take this opportunity to thank and appreciate Mr. Joseph Kolamaramil and the entire Diocese of Jagadalpur for meticulously arranging this event. I would like to speak on the team fulfilling the missionary mandate in today's context. So I will speak on this team in three parts. First of all, we will reflect upon the missionary mandate itself. Secondly, we will analyze the present day situation. Thirdly, we will see how we can respond to the present situation. So let us begin our reflection upon the missionary mandate itself. We know what missionary mandate is. It is a command of Jesus with which Jesus sent his disciples to preach the good news. If we examine every gospel, we may be perhaps wonder to see that every gospel ends with this missionary mandate. For example, Gospel of Matthew chapter 28, verses 16 to 20. Gospel of Mark chapter 16, verses 14. Bishop, uh, please. Thank you very much uh, for your uh, inspiring and uh, enriching session. You said uh, we should have a strong strategy. I was thinking about uh, what uh, is the strategy of Jesus, the gospel. Because in his context, he attracted so many people, different types of people. I think the, the simplicity of life that attracts even today anyone. Uh, for example, in Varnasi, Father Anipi, because of his uh, life, ascetic life and simplicity of life, thousands of people come there. And no politicians uh, speak against them, against the asylum. Think about the uh, Bishop Murikan. We bishops are going and we are meeting people, but uh, he is in the ashram. Many people are flocking to him. So I think that the Priests in religions are cocooned in the comfort zone of institutions, thinking that only priests can become principals and sisters only can become principals. And we have many of our persons are confined in, I call it as a comfort zone of institutions. And we say that let people go to preach. What is the real purpose of consecrated person? Is it to run the education institution and in the present institution? Do we preach Jesus in our schools? Can we preach? I don't think the present situation, if we preach in the schools, it will not be so easy as it was earlier. In our hostels, earlier we used to have rosaries, prayers, mass, everything for the hostel children. Now it is restricted by the CWC and the NCPCR and the and when we look at the message, should we continue all those traditions of the state? Or should we send out priests and religious for direct evangelization as, as much as possible? And remove all the priests and religious from the principal schools? Why can't our let people can't become a principal or a manager of the school? Is it necessary that a priest has to become or a sister has to become? Is it for the priest or sisters? Receive an occasion to become a principal, to sit in the AC rooms, or to use the leisure uh, vehicles. So that's my question, dear Bishop. Please give us some clarification what is a traditional business institution.
how to come out from the institutionalism and go for the purpose for which we are called. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Father Chinda. Uh, I may not be able to give uh, answers to all the points raised by you, however, I agree. We say mission and preaching. We should not restrict the to a particular people. In 1990, Sri Chau John II uh, defined mission in three uh, points. Mission and preaching, they should be to add the chapters. That means people who are not prepared, Jesus. The second is evangelization. That means preaching to the people who are not scared but not practicing Christians. The third category he speaks is of pastoral care. That means ministering to the faithful. These three includes preaching. And also in institutions. What is the aim of our institutions? Our institutions is established and by each to give example and also to give the word of God in a different way. There may be some kind of difficulty or defect. Uh, I think it should be rectified, but it cannot be demolished. Uh, and we should be cautious when we uh, do that. Uh, so many people, our priests, nuns, and laymen, are doing wonderful work to our health care and also education institutions and in other established ways. That's also based on faith. So thank you very much for your special listening. Thank you for this question. May God bless for our
He is a creative author of many books. Dear Father, our hearts are bubbled with great joy to welcome you for enlightening us with the topic Fat is making one a missionary. Hearty welcome, dear Father. Mission concerned that should be another Pentecost for all of us. Yet as the apostles made, two apostles made a journey with the apostles, with the Jesus from Jerusalem to Emmaus, we are also making another journey with Jesus, our Master. When we look, go through that Emmaus anecdote, we can see that the apostles passed through three stages. The first stage was the stage of revelation. The apostles had forgotten their mission. The apostles had abandoned their mission. But the apostles had given up their mission. But when they journeyed with the apostles, the, uh, Jesus again, they are passing to a second stage, a second stage of making new decisions. So, it should also help us to take a new decision on our mission. That is the second step. And the, they were also led to a third stage. The Jesus, Jesus led them to a third stage, the stage of the revolution. We see after encountering Christ in the world of the Eucharist, they are becoming committed missionaries and there is a, a revolution is taking place in their life. Disciples who have disappearing to Emmaus is now again taking up their forgotten mission. They are ready, they are making themselves equipped for a greater commitment and missionary enthusiasm. So let this three days conference be for us and another Emmaus event. Let us be yours, let us also pass through the stage of revelation, stage of new decisions.